Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, back with his good friend of the channel, Dion from Dion Talk. How you doing, sir? Howdy, doing great. Ready for bonus round four. Absolutely. This is going to be our 7 a.m. Uh, video uh, Tuesday morning, so hope folks enjoy it. What I want to do is give a shout out to Dave Ramsey and his seven baby steps. I've just come to realize that my seven rules of one rental at a time kind of mirror his baby steps in that I think they are this important and they feed on each other. So giving Dave Ramsey full credit because his came out first and are adopted. Here are his seven baby steps. Save $1,000 for your emergency fund. Pay off all debt except your house. Save three to six months of expenses for a fully funded emergency fund. Invest 15% of your household income in retirement. Save for your children's college fund. Pay off your home early. Build wealth and give. So what I want to do is not talk about those because I'm not sure I agree with all of them. But I want to talk about these seven and how they kind of relate together. So uh, rule number one for me, and you've heard me talk about this probably more than almost anyone, focus in establishing your buy box. For me, that is where everything starts with one rental at a time. It is step one of the course. It's where everybody, lots of investors fail at this step. You don't even get to the other six. You fail because you're not focused. What do you think of that? Actually, I'm, I'm glad you read off the Dave Ramsey steps because I've always mistakenly said, he's got three great steps and then I stop listening. <laughs> I, I had never paid attention to the seventh step from Dave Ramsey. Ah. Build wealth and give back. Okay, so he's got four steps I really like. Yeah. First three, last one. There you go. So that I'm I'm glad you did that. The focus thing is is huge, and I and I think this is an unpopular opinion that every time I I I say this, I'm not articulate enough to say this well enough in a post in, on Facebook. But Warren Buffett always talks about diversification. So a lot of people want to emulate Warren Buffett. I get it. He's one of the best investors ever, right? Mm. But he didn't diversify to become wealthy. He focused, like Charlie Munger says, you pick your one asset class, you master it to become wealthy and then diversify to protect that wealth. Yep. So your focus, knowing your buy box, it could be crypto. It and could I be don't care what it is. Yeah, stocks. exactly. It could be, it, but it's the one thing you chase. If you chase five rabbits, you're going to starve. Yep. Figure out what your rabbit is because I really believe in the 10,000 hour rule. I think once you have 10,000 hours into something that you're passionate about, you're going to be a master of it. Even if you start with almost zero talent, mm -hmm. you don't have a lot of 10,000 hours to spread around. No, exactly. It's, yeah, uh, back to kind of the reason. War so Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger are a dynamic duo. Warren Buffett is known for a long time that he wants, he wants to have an amazing reputation. He wants to be thought of for generations as that humble guy who is the best known investor ever. And that's why he talks about diversification. Charlie Munger, he's that son of a grouchy old man that just doesn't care. So the, I, I believe both of them think diversification the same way. They just communicate differently. Warren Buffett is thinking about the average person. For the average person, diversification is a good idea because you don't have the 10,000 hours. You haven't done the thing. That's why he talks about go buy the index fund because he knows you're not going to read a hundred earnings reports like he does every day. Charlie Munger is like the famous Charlie Munger quote I have. And the one I fully believe in is go find your, uh, your box and watch that box. Right. You know, it's, or he says, put all, he doesn't, he put, says, put all your eggs in one basket and then watch the basket. Oh, I'm like, I like that. Genius. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, for me, most investors and, and dude, so many people argue with me. You buy my course for 320 bucks. I tell you buy box and focus is day one, go get one. And you fight me. I want two. I want three. I want five different States. Stop it. Do the work. People argue with me on that one too, so much so that I have my answer down to a Cliff Notes version. Okay. They say, how do you invest? 100% real estate. Well, you're not diversified. Well, my properties are small multifamily that are more than 10 miles apart. I'm close to several economic drivers, at least three sources of tenants. I diversify my tenant base by having one third military, one third section eight, and one third working or retired. So I'm ready for a pandemic, stock market crash or prolonged government shutdown. Mm -hmm. I can't be more diversified yeah. than that. 
and be successful. I could have spread my funds out and I would still have to work for another 15 years. Exactly. Yeah, I love that. So again, focus is number one, baby step four, one rental at a time. Number two, and it builds off this focus because if you don't have focus, this doesn't matter. It is your daily discipline. For me, 20 minutes a day. That's all I had. I was working full-time on airplanes. Internet wasn't as, as open as it was when I started, right? You actually had to dial up and I had that dial tone, right? So um, yeah, it's, it's daily. It's getting a, the 10,000 hours, 20 minutes every day. It's why it's step one of the process. Document, learn, note, see what changes. Because I believe real estate or whatever your thing is, I believe they all have heartbeats. And, and they, it's like an organism, whether it's crypto or stocks or whatever your thing is, it's not easy, right? You got to see what's going on. So what do you think about rule number two, daily discipline? I, you, you have to see what's going on because your, your buy box, the market can shift, yeah. but your stage of investing shifts too. So you know your buy box in the beginning, what your risk tolerance is. That might be totally different at your five or 10. Absolutely. And I know you've said this on your channel before, but I'm going to repeat it because it's brilliant. If you set aside four to six hours on a Saturday, you're going to miss all the deals that happened Wednesday and were already off the market yeah. sold pending by Wednesday night. So 15 to 20 minutes a day trumps 10 hours on a Saturday. Oh, without quite every time, every time. And, that, and let's be very clear. This daily discipline is about to be the most important thing, because I believe we're heading into a real estate slowdown right now. I had a conversation with Matt, the mortgage guy and multiple brokers since then. Buyers are retreating right now. Now, some of you, you're in markets. It hasn't happened yet. It's happening everywhere. Uh, you're going to go from 20 offers to 10 to five to one to days on market to inventory rising. You're going to be doing the work every day. You are going to uncover almost by surprise a potentially motivated seller. It's going to happen to all of you if you do the work. Buy the course, do the work. You can, you're going to see what I'm talking about in three to six to nine months. It's going to be amazing. So number three, this is one that I failed at for five years. And it's why it's number three, because uh, it really, it's something I should have done earlier. Grow your network. Your network is your net worth, whatever that is. But try to meet two new people a week and let me just be very clear. It is a hell of a lot easier than most of you think. Just ask, just be, be a human being and, and talk to folks. What do you think? Your, your network is your network is a great statement. I like growing your network. I think as you grow your network, letting everyone in your network know what you do. Yes. I, I just did a deal deep dove last week with Joe and he watches your content. He said he found me through you. So that's cool. awesome. But he picked up a, a flip where he made about $40,000. He paid $160 for it hmm. because he was letting everybody know what he does. Met some friends he knew from a long time ago who were trying to offload a property. They were so frustrated. They were going to give it to the tenant. Hmm. And he said, don't do that. I'll, I'll, and I think he paid $20,000 for it, but he had $160 in his wallet. Hmm. They needed food. That $160 locked in the deal because he was talking about what he wants to invest in. Yeah. So as you grow your net worth, net work, share what you're investing in. Let me be very clear there. These all tie together. This number three, grow your network. You should, you should tell everybody your buy box from rule number one, everyone. For most of you, it should be your email signature. Oh, by the way, I buy three and four bedroom homes, this zip code, this area, blah, blah. Tell every, you never know. You never know who's going to come and say, I got one of those. And the only reason I did six deals in the last year is because of off-market deals because everybody knows what I buy. So these tie together. Number four, oh, this is one of my greatest frustrations. Everybody wants a good deal. Everybody wants a great deal. But here's the deal. You are purely guessing until you can articulate what an average deal is. Everybody's buy box has an average. Everybody's market has an average. And until you know average, you have no flipping clue what a great deal is. What do you think? Don't focus on price. Don't focus on rates because rates, price, rents 
all fluctuate, mm -hmm. are totally different in your market from one side of town to the other side of town. Sometimes a couple blocks away can make a huge difference. Mm -hmm. So it comes down to the, 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 the rule of focus, right? If you're trying in five different markets at a distance, learning that average is going to be really challenging. Mm -hmm. But when you focus, you get your footprint down to what you can handle. For some people, it's it's your zip code. For some people, it's half of a zip code. Mm -hmm. For some people, it's a county, uh, you know, depending on population and neighborhoods and your familiarity with the area. Yep. So ab absolutely. Um, yeah, that's I, I agree with that. Cool. All right. Number five. This is just the reality that we live in the real world and bad stuff happens. Bad things will happen. You're in a people business. You have physical assets, mother nature, all kinds of stuff. Bad things happen. Sorry, learn and move on. Uh, a takeaway from my brother who's had rentals for a long time, mm -hmm. retired at 50, and I have a lot of respect for him. He said, your tenants are going to trash your place. Yeah. Expect it. Who cares? Right. Bad things are going to happen. The, 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 the question you get from a newer investor is, what if a tenant trashes your place? No, that's not it. They're going to. Just plan for it. Yep. When they don't, great. But if they do, here's my system for planning for that. Very cool. So number six, this one is one I got from you. You helped me articulate it. Uh, this is a five to 10 year commitment. It's get rich for sure, not quick. Right? Make work optional in 10 years or less. Yeah, that was actually going to be the name of my YouTube channel um, before I realized nobody knew what FI was. I ah! mean, in, in the financial independence community, I run into people that ask me, what is FI? What is FI? Uh, it, my channel was going to be 10 years to FI. I think the average individual can reach financial freedom in 10 years or less, even if you're not starting from the best position. I agree. And you're not going to do it in two. No. I, I, I talk to people often. I have a friend who just acquired her first duplex. She's going to be getting her next one. And she says, I want to retire in two years. Well, it's, it's a great goal. Shoot, yeah. shoot for the stars. You hit the moon, right? Yeah. But mm -hmm. be ready for that disappointment. It's going to take you longer than two years. Yeah, I agree. And then the number seven baby step, and again, all these tie together, is audit your personal network. Are they helping or hurting you? I can't tell you how many people um, have people in their network that are maybe purposefully, but even worse, inadvertently being battery drainers that are pulling you backwards. This It takes so much to get that energy and inertia going forward. You don't need people being wet blankets. And oh, by the way, I want to tell you, if you're on this journey as rule number six, you may have to change or audit your network multiple times because my network today looks nothing like it did five years ago or 10 years ago and heaven forbid 20 years ago. Uh, so again, audit, audit, audit. Yeah. You can't change the people around you, but you can change the people around you. I love that. And I, I would like to do a video on this sometime, but the problem is this matters to me. And we try to make videos that matter to the people that are going to watch it, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, I can make a video for myself and watch it. But your agent, your lender, your contractor, some investors you know, are not your mentors. A lot of people, and I made this mistake too, when I first got into this, I thought my agent has 30 rentals. I'm going to follow everything he says. Mm -hmm. He'd be like a mentor. And he hated that word, so I understand why. But he doesn't have my goals, my resources, my timeline. Yeah. Had I listened to him, I would have went bankrupt. Oh. Um, the first couple of deals he had me make offers on were would have been massive alligators because he never used mortgages. He always invested all cash, oh, wow. and he's never invested in small multifamily. So he didn't get the math. He didn't get what I was trying to do. Mm -hmm. So when you're auditing who's around you, remember, your lender is goal is to sell loan products. Your agent's goal is to close deals. Your contractor's job is to get work. I'm not saying they're bad people and that they're going to take advantage of you, but you have a different goal than that person. So monitor who's around you and make sure you're, you're taking your information in from sources where you then filter it. Awesome. Well, here are the seven baby steps we've gone through. The one rental at a time baby steps. Number one, focus, get a buy box. Two, daily discipline, 20 minutes a day. Number three, grow your network. Add two people a week. 
Learn, number four, learn average deal first, only buy good or great deals. Number five, bad things will happen. Sorry, learn and move on. Six, five to 10 year commitment, get rich for sure, not quick. And the final one, audit your personal network. Are they helping or hurting you? Dion, where can people find you? Right here on YouTube, Dion Talk Financial Freedom. And in the one rental at a time course, I did some bonus material. Absolutely, man. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Ciao.